76 years ago, the execution of a young black teen made history in South Carolina. George Stinney was convicted and tried in a one day trial. Decades later, his case was overturned and it's now being used today as a lesson. Here's the latest on DBL's True Crime Chronicles. George Stinney Jr. was a 14-year-old living in Alcula, South Carolina. He and his family lived in a very small, working-class mill town where white and black neighborhoods were separated by railroad tracks. It was March 1944. Two young girls, 7-year-old Mary Thames and 11-year-old Betty Binnaker, were found dead. Police were tipped off that the girls were seen talking to George and later showed up at his home and arrested him. There was no real investigation done by the police. It was just assumed that either George Stinney or George Stinney and his brother committed this offense. What happened next made history. One of the most shocking things in the George Stinney case is he was tried by a jury of 12 white men. That certainly is not a jury of his peers. That's certainly not a cross section of Clarendon County at the time, which was half African American, half white. And here we have an all white jury with his family not being even allowed into the courtroom. The trial lasted only two hours, and the jury had a 10 minute deliberation. George was convicted of murder and sentenced to death by electric chair. There were 70 years of silence. And then in 2014, George's case came back in the spotlight when his family pushed for a retrial and high school students started researching the case. And I think for all of us in my class, it was kind of like a starting fire for us to, to understand more of what we had to do to get justice for anyone and us as well. It worked. A new trial was granted and the verdict was overturned, citing fundamental constitutional violations of due process. We don't know whether or not he did it, but that wasn't the issue. It was whether or not his constitutional rights uh, were preserved, and they weren't, and that was clear. And the further I got into it, the more I saw just how obvious and blatant it was uh, that he wasn't afforded his constitutional protections. George's family hopes his story can be a lesson for today's society as protests rage on for racial equality. It was a wrongful killing. He was too young. First of all, they didn't give him a chance. Look at stuff that's going on up here now. They didn't give him a chance. Earlier, Al and I spoke with a reporter in South Carolina to learn more about this case. Take a look. We are joined by News 19 anchor J.R. Berry from Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you for joining us. Uh, George's case was overturned in 2014, but his story is still being used today as a lesson. Uh, please let us know about that. You know, what happened to George Stinney should never, ever happen again in an American courtroom. You know, we have laws on the books right now we didn't have back then, ensuring we have equal justice for blacks and whites. You may find this hard to believe, but way back in 1944, George Stinney was the only black person in the courtroom for his trial, which lasted not all of a day. Just wow. terrible. Well, you know, to that point, there have been questions for years of whether his original trial was fair. Many have said that he was forced to confess. Uh, can you give us any background behind that? You know, he was 14 when all of this happened, and his parents weren't even there for questioning or his trial. They actually had to flee Alkalu on the day of his arrest because they were told that a lynch mob was headed to their mm. home to hurt them. So they left. They never saw George again. He also, guys, didn't have an attorney for questioning, which has fueled speculation over the years that this young man confessed, perhaps in an effort to save his family somehow, that perhaps law enforcement made certain threats. But again, pure speculation by some who have followed this case over the years. It makes my, uh, my skin crawl and my stomach upset for uh, his family and uh, 14 years old. Wow, what an injustice. Yeah. Uh, now, it has been 76 years. So what is the general consensus in that community, that particular small community? Are they still split if George did it or not? Well, apparently they're still split with passion, guys, because right now most of the players who were around when all of this happened have passed on, but they do have family members who have survived and Stenny's surviving family members to this day and others in the community 
they continue believing his innocence. But the girl's family members, the two victims in this case, they still believe he was guilty. So do others in the community, despite this judge exactly. basically saying Stinney did not get a fair trial and he didn't do it. Wow. JR, we appreciate you uh, bringing this, this case to light. A lot of people I don't think are aware of it, except for that small community. So thank you for the latest on this case. Yeah. And to our viewers, if you want to learn more, visit WLTX.com. You can also listen to the new podcast episode about George called An Execution in South Carolina. Uh, just search True Crime Chronicles on your favorite podcast player. Thank you, JR. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know a lot of people would look at this like, why are you running a story about a 70 year old case? Your name and your, your legacy is all you really have in this world. And being exonerated, even posthumously, is important, and especially just the right to a fair trial. And that's why we continue to go back and revisit history so we make sure that we're not going to repeat it. Well said. And the family did not give up. That's they right. Absolutely did not.